I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to, uh, oh, rats, I did it again. I tell you what, they can't take me anywhere. Yeah, is it going to come, is it going to raise up? Bibles, Bible apps, Psalm 34 is where we're going to be. If you don't have a a Bible with you or an app on your device, then uh, there's Bibles in the pews all around you. Feel free to grab one of those, use one of those, take one of those if you need the Bible. We want you to have the Bible. Uh, We believe the Word of God will change your life, and so if you need one, take one. Uh, Hey, how many of you guys like to eat? Yeah, I thought so. So I I want you to do something. I want you to take a few moments and share with your neighbor two things. Uh, I want you to tell them what your favorite food is, and I want you to tell them the food that you eat the most of. Okay? Ready, set, go. (laughs) I'm with you, man. I am with you. Uh. Oh, you'll hear just, well, I don't even talk about favorite food. Mine, burgers. I love burgers. I can eat burgers morning, noon, and night. All right, you guys hungry yet? Yeah. It's a good thing the service isn't going to last that long because you guys can go out to eat afterwards and, uh, and kind of now that I've got your appetite wet, hopefully you won't fight over where to go because you've already decided, I want this. It's my favorite. Hey, we are kicking off our uh, Taste and See series today, and we are looking today and for the next six weeks at food passages in the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of them. If you've not paid attention to that, there's tons and tons uh, of discussions of food, and we've pulled some out, and we're going to be talking about how we feed our souls how we take care of our lives and our families. And our series begins with a delicious invitation from God because God invites us to taste his goodness. Psalm 34, I'm gonna pick up in verse one. And David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's what we've been doing for the the first 20 minutes or so of the service. He goes on, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. God challenges us to taste and see that he is good. He invites us to taste his goodness. Now, how many of you, so we've talked about food already, how many of you would call yourselves picky eaters? Let's see your hands. Go ahead and confess it. Yeah. Not a lot in here, huh? How many of you used to be picky eaters and you got over it? See, I never got over it, all right? I'm still a picky eater, and, and uh, uh, I was the kid who would beg my mom to, you know, leave stuff out of recipes or just make some just for me. And, you know, if you're not, if you don't make it with all that stuff in it for, you know, the whole family, just make it just for me, just set it aside. And, and, uh, and they would always tell me, oh, you know, just pick out what you don't like. So I was the last one done eating every meal because I was digging through, pulling the stuff out. Right? My dad's so annoying. He like order pizzas with everything on them. Just take off what you don't like. That's evil. All right? Can we just say it what it is? If you're picky, that's evil. You know, so those of you that eat everything, you're like, oh, what's wrong with that? It's a great idea. I sat there like this. You know, everybody else is done waiting on me. Because I, because, you know, I don't like this. If I was picky, that's why I always liked Burger King better than McDonald's. Right? Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special odors don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way, right? <laughs> Flashback to the 70s. You guys with me? I mean, obviously that shaped my soul because uh, I, I still order almost everything my way, you know, and, uh, and I know some of you are that way too and, and, and all. And, and what's funny is God has a sense of humor, so he gave us uh, one of our daughters who was extremely picky. 
Uh, I mean, my youngest daughter, Alyssa, she was, uh, when she was little, she didn't like anything. And, and I got to calling her a psychic food critic because she could just look at something and tell you it was yucky. Uh, <laughs> didn't have to taste it to know. And, and here's the reality. God knows what will bless our lives and feed our souls. He says, come taste and see. And he is offering a smorgasbord of spiritual delights. And to all of us, he says, come taste, see that I am good. But here's the deal. With God, we don't have the right to be picky. We cannot demand to have it our way. Because if we follow Jesus, if we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, if we believe that he died on the cross to pay for our sins and was raised from the dead, and we have made that commitment to follow Jesus, then what we're saying is that we trust God to feed our souls with excellence. We trust God. God, you're, you're the one who's inviting us to taste and see. We're going to trust you to feed our souls with excellence. But, the, but there's a problem. And the problem is, is that we develop appetites for destructive things. I mean, we like disgusting things, things that sicken us and weaken us and destroy our souls. Um, since I've already asked you to share with your neighbor your favorite food, I want you to share with your neighbor the most disgusting thing that you ever ate or tried to eat. Ready, set, go. Nothing? Nothing at all? What was it? What? Ben Messer had this juice. He's oh. extremely at it. That was nasty. That's what Jesse said, too. <laughs> uh. Okay, every service likes talking about disgusting food more than their favorites. Uh, I don't know why that is, but it just happened. Uh, by the way, if, if uh, you're a husband and you just looked at your wife and said, that thing you fixed last night, <laughs> we've got marriage counseling available. Um, so now I've done, a lot of, I've done a lot of travel internationally with missions and, and have eaten some pretty disgusting things. I was in China and they served us fried worms. And uh, yeah, uh, they, but you had to eat one because, you know, just to prove you were cool. Uh, and uh, it was funny thing was they, they felt just like a Cheeto in your mouth. Uh, so think about that when you're popping a Cheeto in there later on. And I was in Mongolia and they served us uh, lamb entrails. Uh, barely got through that one. Um, and, and if anyone ever offers you mare's milk tea, go ahead and pass right now. I'm just telling you. But the absolute most disgusting thing that I've ever tried to eat was in Nigeria. And, and uh, they have this stuff called pepper soup and pounded yams. And when they talk about yams, we're not talking about sweet potatoes. They're not orange and, and wonderful. They're uh, these big uh, root kind of things. They're white, and they boil them, and they mash them up, and they have the consistency of, like, um, biscuit dough. And they pinch it off, and then they dip it into the pepper soup, which they have a beef variety and a fish variety. It doesn't really matter which one you try. Uh, I thought, I'm going to go safe and try the beef variety. And I, I dipped it in there, and I put it in my mouth, and my body spoke to me. It said, uh, you take it out or we'll send it out. <laughs> right now. No ifs, ands, there was no negotiating here. And, you know, you're supposed to eat the stuff they serve you because you're, you know, being polite. And I couldn't choke it down. I, I nudged my friend who was the Nigerian pastor who took me there. And I said, you got to eat mine. And he's like, okay, you know, just... <laughs> Because they love this stuff. They eat it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They, it's their staple diet. And somehow the, being raised in that, they've developed a taste for it that is repulsive to any Westerner that I have taken there. And, I, and I've taken a number of people and, and people who weren't picky like me. People, I can eat anything. Not this. <laughs> Could not choke it down. It'd be like if you took a week old bag of trash and juiced it. And tried to drink it, okay? That's, that's kind of, yeah, that's, we're talking that realm of repulsive. We're not talking about just a little bit. And, and here's the thing. They, they have developed that taste for it. And the, and the truth is we develop taste for nasty stuff. We really do. You think about it. You ever heard someone saying like this? Well, you have to acquire a taste for this. Mm-hmm, sure. And I had a friend tell me one time, well, you got to learn to like it. 
Can I learn to like it? I go, yeah, I can learn to like dog poop, but I'm not going to. <laughs> See, we, we develop taste for nasty stuff, but it's true for our soul food as well. Because of sin, we desire and delight in habits and activities and relationships that are killing us. And we're drawn back to them over and over and over again. Uh, Because that sin nature, even though we're redeemed, even though we're forgiven by Jesus Christ, even though we know heaven is our home, uh, but but that sin nature in us still, still craves that stuff. And Scripture talks about this. 2 Peter chapter 2 says, The dog returns to its vomit. And the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mud. So we crave things that will destroy our souls. We hunger for things that sabotage our families. We seek after the poison that kills us. But God offers a different path. See, that's why we talk about leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Because God really wants to change your life. He wants to offer us life abundant and joy unending and love that never fails and hope that will carry you through the darkest of times. He invites us to taste and to discover how good he really is. And most of us here have tasted and we agree that God is really good. But often we're living on samples rather than servings. You ever been to Costco? Everybody ever been to Costco? Yeah. Do you like to go on weekends when they have lots of the sample ladies out? Is that, yeah, I've got, I got a fan in the back there. See, when I go to Costco, uh, you know, my wife usually takes me and and then she's shopping and I'm grazing (laughs) because it's really cool. They're handing out free food and I like free food. And, and, uh, and when the girls were little, I'd say, Hey, we're going to show you something that's really cool because you can come here and, and, you know, taste stuff for free. And, and, uh, and so we'd wander around and go and find the pizza samples and the burger samples and the ice cream sam- or the cake samples and stuff like that. You know what? You can annoy those ladies if you go back too many times. <laughs> Haven't quite figured that one out because they're paid to give it away. I was helping them do their job. And they were like, you've had enough. Uh, no, I haven't, really. You've got more on your plate, and I want it. But uh, that's another sermon. Uh, so... Uh, but we go in there and, and they're trying to get you to taste it so you want more of it. And you go buy the, the serving size so that you can take it home and eat it. And, and see, a lot of us do God's goodness that way. We're kind of grazing. We sample a sermon on the weekend and then we return to our normal soul-killing fare. We go to a retreat or a conference and we gorge ourselves on God's goodness And then we come back to the normal uh, stuff that kills us. And and, and if we're honest about it, we'd agree it's time for a change. We don't want to live like that. We don't want to keep going back to the, well, as Scripture says, the vomit again. We really want to to change our lives and, and feast on God's goodness. I don't know a follower of Christ who doesn't say, yeah, that's really what I want for my life. Um. So we're going to talk about maybe some steps to change in a minute. But before we do that, you need to know that changing your spiritual menu will be as difficult as altering your diet. Anybody ever dieted? (laughs) Oh, come on. Anybody ever been on a diet in their life? Golly, there's like three of you that raised your hands. It's like, I know, it's not politically correct to call it diet anymore. We're going to change our lifestyle, right? (laughs) We're going to change our eating lifestyle so we can lie to ourselves because it still sucks. Uh, But... (laughs) It's never easy. And if we're honest about it, the best motivation is, you know, like pain and suffering and fear of death. Because dieting for vanity doesn't really work, you know. But, it, but if you're dieting to stay off of insulin or to recover from a heart attack or because of celiacs or food allergies or something like that, it seems to be more lasting, more sustainable because the motivation is higher. But the, but the reality is to change your diet requires commitment and sacrifice and planning, right? Because you got to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start at this point, and I'm going to begin. Does everybody else start on Monday? Yeah. Is, that, is that like the, the official diet beginning day? It's like, so we we got to commit. I'm going to do this. It's going to take sacrifice because you got to give up stuff that you love. And then, of course, it's got to take planning because if you don't get rid of the junk food in your house and replace it with the healthy food you're going to eat, you wake up in the morning, what are you going to eat? Yeah, the junk food because it's there and you're hungry. Yeah, you gotta, you got to plan it. The same is true if you really want to feed your soul. 
If you want to bless your family, if, if you want to grow healthy in your faith, then it's going to take commitment. And it's going to take sacrifice and it's going to take planning. So we want to know if you're going to accept the Soul Food Taste and See Challenge. Soul Food Taste and See Challenge. There's going to be a three-step challenge that, that I want to submit to you in just a few moments that, uh, that I want each one of you to consider accepting and following. Um, and because what we want to do is we want to move you past the samples into the servings. We, we want to challenge you to go ahead and do the hard work of changing your spiritual menu. Uh, we're going to invite you to make some sacrifices. Uh, and, and we want to help you feed your soul. That's why we're doing this series. And, and during the series, we're going to offer some things that are going to help you do that. Uh, uh, like, for instance, this Friday and Saturday, we're having a marriage conference here at the church. It's video-driven, uh, but you can come and invest uh, six or seven hours in making your relationship with your spouse better. It costs all of $40, includes all your materials, and, and, and it's a chance to bless you and your family. And it's worth coming and learning how to be a better husband or wife with other couples. So that's for you, to feed your soul, feed your family. We also are launching uh, Right Now Media, beginning today. Uh, and Right Now Media, there's a whole bulletin uh, page d dedicated to that. It is a video library for you to feed your soul and your family on. And, and here's the deal. We need your email address to include you in this because we're going to send out an invitation to everybody's email that we have. So if you're not sure that we have your email or if you've changed your email in like the last year or two, then grab one of the connection cards, fill it out, drop it in the offering box, right, right now, media on there. Fill the whole thing out. Don't just like put your email on there because we don't know how to check it that way. But uh, put that information on there so that we can include you in this because it's got Bible study materials and marriage materials and kids materials and youth materials, all kinds of stuff for you to access. And since we are kind of digital driven, this is a digital library for you to use. Uh, it doesn't mean that you go read books. It means you watch videos and stuff. So those are things for you. But here is the three-step taste and see challenge. You ready for this? Here's what we're going to ask everyone to do for the next 36 days if you want to have a healthier soul. Step one, read one chapter of the Bible each day. One whole chapter of the Bible each day. By the way, this begins today. Psalm 34 is the, te is the text, the chapter for the day. And we're going to encourage you. You've already, I've already read half of it for you, so it's not that hard to finish. See, I know some of you are going, only one chapter? We want a tough spiritual workout. Great, you can read as many as you want. But we're trying to make this for people who haven't been reading the Bible at all because we believe the Bible will change your life. We believe that if you want to hear from God, God will speak to you when you read the Bible. And so what we've done is we've taken 36 of our favorite chapters, the pastoral staff, our favorite chapters, and we laid them out in a reading plan for you. And our challenge is read one a day. And when you read it, don't just check the box, go, okay, I read it, done. No, you pray before you read it. Say, God, I want to hear your voice. Speak to me. Tell me something. Because these are chapters of the Bible that God spoke to us out of, where we heard God's voice. And we're saying, hey, guess what? We believe he spoke to us. He can speak to you. And maybe it'll be for encouragement. Maybe it'll be for conviction. Maybe it'll be for a change in your lifestyle that you need to make. But you listen to God, and if he speaks to you, highlight that verse. Write it down and think about it for that day. Okay, this is what God said to me. I need to think about this today. Uh, and, and so that's what we're asking you to do. And by the way, the, that list is in your bulletin. It's on the sermon notes, the life notes. Uh, it's got a week's worth. But in the bulletin, there's the whole 36-day plan so that you can tear it off, magnet it to your refrigerator, and see it in the morning when you get up so you know what to read. We're trying to make this easy for you, and we're going to print it each week uh, uh, for a few weeks. So, so that's step one. Read one chapter of the Bible each day from now through June 1st. Step two. Pray daily with your spouse and children if they're at home. Now, some of you are like, oh, this is cake. We've been praying together as a husband and wife for years. This is no problem at all. Give us something difficult. And others of you are like freaking out inside right now. Because I know there's some of you that have never prayed together as husband and wife. And, and uh, maybe you encourage your kids to pray, but you've never actually prayed for them. There's some of you, and I, guys, I'm going to pick on you because I, I hear you say all the time, that you've never prayed out loud at all. 
You've never said a prayer out loud. Maybe you've mumbled the Lord's Prayer when other people, everybody's praying it together, but you've never really said your own prayer out loud. And the idea of going home and and praying with your wife, you don't know how to do it, you don't know what to do, and it just kind of is like, uh, I can't do this. You can. I'm going to coach you through it right now. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm even going to give you a prayer to say, okay? So if you're really nervous, just write this down, okay? She'll forgive you until you get comfortable praying your own. You can use this one. It'll work. Because here's the deal. If you'll do this, if you'll do this, if you'll pray together as husbands and wives, if you, if you will share that moment of spiritual intimacy, God will show up in your relationship and he will do things you never imagined. He will make your home stronger and your marriage stronger. So guys, here it is. Here's, here's all you gotta do, okay? And you can even make it cool. You can get a hug her really close and just whisper it in her ear so only you and she and God hear it, okay? And just pray something like this. God, thank you for my wife. You can even use her name if you want to, okay? <laughs> God, thank you for my wife. She will love to hear that, you, that you're thankful to God for her. Thank you for my wife. Bless her and help me to love her like she deserves. There it is. Amen. There's a prayer. You can pray that prayer. You can, you can do that. You can, even if you didn't write the notes, you can fake it, okay? It's close enough. It's not that hard. Ladies, pray for your husbands. Let them know that you're thankful for them and ask God to bless them. And, and don't just pray, uh, you know, watch your kids pray at night, but get down on your knees and pray with your kids. Let them hear you bless them and ask God to take care of them. That will be powerful for them. And, and if you need to, like, you know, give them some examples and pray that God would help them to be not as stupid as their cousins or whatever that are, you know, messing their lives up. Because they know about their cousins anyway. So, um, you know, just let them know that you're for them and you want to see God bless their lives. This will change the dynamic of your family more than anything else that you ever do. So pray daily with your spouse and children. Read one chapter of the Bible each day. Number three, take a step of faith. Take a step of faith. Do something, do anything that will stretch your faith. Uh, Hebrews Chapter 11 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, we want to please God. We, we want to honor uh, our Savior, and, and so we want to please God. So that means it requires faith. So I want to challenge you to take a step of faith. Do something that makes you uncomfortable for God. Now, I know a lot of us live our lives trying to get comfortable, and I just ask you to do something that will make you uncomfortable. Well, we've already talked about this. If you're going to change your spiritual menu... It's going to take commitment. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take planning. We're trying to help you do those things, but but here's the deal. If you're going to take a step of faith, it's going to mean you're going to have to go outside of what you normally do. So here's a couple of ideas for you to take a step of faith. How about serve in a new way? Serve in a new way. Do something that you haven't done before service-wise. Volunteer to go on one of the missions days. Whether it's one day up to Peach Springs or a weekend down to Mexico or up to Idaho this summer, uh, just take your family and go, we're going to serve other people and bless them in Jesus' name. Or, or, or maybe volunteer to lead a life group. Some of you are going, I couldn't lead a life group. That's crazy. There's no way I could lead a life group. Well, I don't know. Do you love Jesus? Yeah, you already kind of said that. Do you like people? Well, yeah, some of them. Do people like you? Kind of. Well, maybe kind of, a little bit. Okay, you're qualified to lead a life group. Talk to Pastor Chet and let him know, hey, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. Let's talk about leading a life group, what that would look like. Or if that's too much, volunteer to work in the nursery. Volunteer to be a greeter. Maybe just go next door to your annoying neighbor's house and pull their weeds. Yeah, you guys all have annoying neighbors, right? If you don't, you might be the annoying neighbor. Just one of those things to think about. But do something, do something that will, will just allow you to bless others in Jesus' name. So serve in a new way is a way to take a step of faith. Or, and you can do both and, sacrifice something meaningful for God. You know, Jesus sacrificed everything for us, right? I, I mean, he gave it all on the cross, to save us from our sins. And, and God delights, not in ritual sacrifice, but when his children honor him and, and say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something that's valuable to me. 
because I want to get closer to you, and, and I love you more than this. And, and so it's got to be something meaningful. It can't be like, you know, I can't go, okay, God, I'm going to give you Brussels sprouts. Because honestly, uh, Brussels sprouts make my top 10 list for most disgusting things I ever ate. And, uh, and, the, and the thing is, I've actually been fasting from Brussels sprouts for like 30 years anyway. So, <laughs> so that, would, that would be a meaningless sacrifice. So if I was going to sacrifice something meaningful, it would be like, um, the, <laughs> everybody wants me to give up ice cream. Here, the truth is. See, and, and, here, and here's the deal. This is, this is so funny. I could, I could give up ice cream and look re- like a really huge sacrifice, but I haven't been eating that much for the last nine months because I like my pants to fit. And uh, so that vanity thing, you know, kind of worked a little bit there. But no, I haven't been eating much ice cream. But see, it looked really good. Oh, I'm going to give up ice cream. And you guys go, oh, he's giving up ice cream. But God would know that wasn't a real sacrifice. So yeah, some of you mentioned Diet Pepsi. So if I gave up Diet Pepsi, then that would be huge because you guys know I'm an addict, right? So for the next 36 days, I'm going to give up Diet Pepsi and all diet soda, uh, all soda, really, because so funny. You guys are clapping, and I haven't, number one, I haven't done it yet. And and number two, uh, you know, it's so funny because it it has nothing to do with my health. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, your guys' approval. Here's what it is. Every time for the next 36 days that I want to diet Pepsi, which would be like 25 times a day. Uh, But every time I think, I wish I had a Diet Pepsi, what I'm really going to do is go, okay, God, I want you to fill my life instead of me filling my life. See, that hunger for something that that is part of our lives, that is meaningful to us, draws us closer to God when we give it to him as a sacrifice and we say, God, I want you to fill my life. I love you more than I value this. That's what the sacrifice for me means. And if you make some kind of sacrifice to God, it doesn't matter whether that's a monetary gift or you lay aside something that's part of your dietary you know, stuff that you like or whether it's some totally random thing. Maybe you, you give up uh, you know, your, your social media or whatever. It, whatever you do, let it draw you closer to God because you're saying, God, I want you to change my life. I want you to feed my soul. And I'm doing it because God issues the same Offer to me that he does to you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So are we going to take the challenge? Are we going to invite God to, well, not just give us a sample, but to fill our lives with his goodness? See, I'm going to do the stuff that I've challenged you to do. I challenge you to let God work in your life in amazing ways. Take the challenge Taste and see what God will do. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us, for changing our lives, for giving us grace and mercy and hope. And today we acknowledge the the junk that we fill our souls with. And we pray that you would help us to change. We, We want you to fill our lives with your goodness. And so we offer ourselves to you, even as you gave yourself for us in Jesus' death and resurrection. It's in his name we pray, amen.